Hi folks, I'm glad you're here. Thank you very much for joining me today. It's Tuesday, January 16th, 2024. I hope everyone enjoyed their holiday weekend. Yeah, it was Martin Luther King's holiday yesterday. We've been having a small earthquake swarm there in northern Alaska, the largest being a magnitude 4.5. They are reporting five earthquakes within the last 24 hours. This is an area they call the Bering Strait Microplate, which is doing a um, clock rotation. You can see it here. I got it kind of drawn out for you. Um, what's interesting about these earthquakes, normally USGS and other scientists would say it was because of uh, thawing of the permafrost if it was spring, but it is not spring. So we're having earthquakes when they shouldn't be. This is also an area of past volcanic eruptions. I got drawn out some of the um, old cinder cones. You can probably see them there. Yeah, and it's close to an area where these earthquakes are occurring. I got three other volcanic fields that I found that I drew out. Uh, let's see, up over here to the north. We got the Espenberg Mars volcanic field. And then to the uh, east, Emir Volcanic Field. Some of these fields only recently erupted about 17,000 years ago. It is a real remote location. The 4.5, five people said that they did feel that earthquake. In Nome, Alaska, two people said they felt that earthquake intensity level 3. And a little bit farther north, another area they call Nome, Alaska, intensity level three. So the farthest location would be 74.12 miles, maybe about 75 miles from the location of the magnitude 4.5. This 4.5 was 23.1 kilometers in depth or a little more than 14 miles in depth. The moment tensor ball shows uplift spreading this is a wide diffused zone of seismicity extending from the northwest Alaska across the Bering Strait into eastern Russia. This zone is believed to mark the northern boundary of the Bering microplate. It actually goes, well, it encompasses the whole area, and then it goes across um, towards Fairbanks, I believe. Moderate to large earthquakes have occurred in this area. The largest event within this microplate was probably in 1958, a magnitude 7.3. Uh, they call it the Huslia earthquake, and it was caused by normal faulting, they say. But then there was this swarm that occurred back in 2014, the largest being a magnitude 5.7. And interestingly, in that location, they actually had a scenario of uh, what could happen with a magnitude 5.7 earthquake. I got the wrong date on here, but it's supposed to be 2007. Let me fix that. There was actually hundreds of earthquakes during that um, swarm. It occurred about June, and they said it was because of the um, spring thaw from the permafrost. Well, we don't have spring thaw currently going on right now, so they can't blame that on this latest earthquake swarm. After all those earthquakes occurred, they put in GPS uh, locators, and that's when they found out that this plate is actually rotating clockwise compared to the North American plate, um, which is moving at a northern direction in this area. Most of the volcanic eruptions that occurred within this area are what's called Mar eruptions. It's when uh, water meets lava, and then they have the uh, eruptions. The Devil Mar eruption, let me go to that location. What they are is because the groundwater comes in contact with um, the lava or magma as it comes up. These are low-flowing, low, low uh, types of cinder cones, very shallow in, in size. The volcanic eruptions... Like I said, in this area, it was only about 17,000 years ago. So then what happened was 
uh, water filled in. You see all these little lakes? Water filled in the areas of the volcanic eruptions. Look at that. Yeah, some of them are quite large, aren't they? Yeah. Whitefish Lake is one of the largest Mars they call in the world. That area erupted somewhere between 100 to 200,000 years ago. And I'll bring it back out here. You can see the Aleutian Islands. Bring it out. And this is the location where I'm talking about. Yeah, there's a lot of Mars in that area. Yeah, volcanic um, lakes that were filled in after the eruptions. Yeah, it's all grayed out because, I don't know, this is supposed to be a, a new image from satellites. But let's go over here. See if it'll clear up a little bit. Yeah. We got a small one I can barely see there. Yeah, Landstar took this image. Makes me wonder, what are they trying to hide? This is the location of that uh, 4.5. The wider view is from 2017. And it looks like we might have another one up over here. Let me zoom in. Yeah, right there. Hard to tell. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. But you can see there is a cinder cone here. Right there. Could be uh, from the lava coming in contact with the permafrost. They do know that the permafrost has a lot of methane gases. And they've been recently studying these methane gas explosions up there in the Arctic Circle in Alaska. So we have one moment tensor ball and we got uplift and we got spreading. So what's going on? Yeah, what are your thoughts? Do you think it's the uh, methane that's coming up? Put your comments down below. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. As always, be safe, be prepared, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye. Thank you.